Hey there, Chelsea here, Monarch Alley. I'm a vintage lover, thrifter, and part-time reseller. Today I have my weekend what sold video for you where I'm going to go over my sales from Saturday and Sunday, June 5th and 6th, and um, share some tips on how to ship out some pots and pans. So I have to say that this weekend was more than 70% of my sales for the week, <laughs> which sounds wild. Like I had to check all the platforms to make sure that my spreadsheet wasn't off or something, but that's what it is. And you know what? It's because I finally had the chance to start photographing and listing some of the items in my recent thrift haul. And I already made a lot of sales from that haul, which is really exciting. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to List Perfectly, a cross-listing service that I use. If you want to get a discount, discount on trying it out. There is a link in my description below. I highly, highly recommend it. I have tried other cross-listing platforms. List Perfectly is my favorite. Um, and then obviously I will get like a little bit, little teensy bit of an affiliate um, bounce back from that. So I appreciate if you do use my link below. Okay. So yes, Poshmark, I only made a few sales on Poshmark and they were pretty minimal. Um, my bigger sales came from other platforms, but I'm just going to go kind of in order of when they arrived. So the first one that I have for you makes me so happy. It is this Boba Fett backpack. This is in my recent thrift haul video. Um, it is a Pottery Barn Kids backpack, which is pretty cool. So I paid $5 for this. It sold for $25 on Mercari. Now I will say that I um, decided to use my own shipping label on Mercari and offer free shipping on Mercari. So um, although like I get $21 back after their fees, there will probably, probably be an additional six to $8 in shipping. I haven't calculated guys, you got to calculate before you list stuff. So you know what you're working with, but I knew it would be six to $8 and I was okay with that. So I'm probably going to make about 15 overall on those, which isn't bad because it was just fun for me to pick it up and it was so easy to photograph and list. So anyway, this sold pretty quickly. I only had it listed for a week or two and someone bought it for my full asking price on Mercari. So cool. Okay, so Boba Fett, love it. Okay, Star Wars. Um, what else do I have? Okay, so next I have the Re a Revere Wear um, Pots and Pans set. Sorry for the wiggle of the camera. So this is what I'm going to be showing you how I ship today. So that'll be at the end of this video. But um, this was a sale from Facebook Marketplace. It did take a while to sell, and I slowly dropped the price. So it finally got to $22. Um, the buyer is paying for shipping, so I'll get $20 back from that, which is great because I think I have about $5 invested in this bundle as it is. Um, and what's pretty cool about it too is that like Revere Wear, I do uh, find, I feel like I'm finding it a lot in my area, which is really great because if I find it for 2 to $5, I'll generally pick it up and then I'm starting to bundle more and more together. So um, for example, that listing came from like, I think I had one thing listed and maybe a, like the frying pan. And then I found the little pot and I just deleted that listing, added the little pot to make it a little bit more like value for the buyer and it paid off. So someone bought that for 22 on Facebook. I will say that this weekend, there seemed to be some glitches happening on Facebook marketplace because I had a few different um, buyers like message me that they were having issues like completing a transaction or finding the listing that they had saved. Um, anyway, that was a bummer, but I still made some really solid sales on marketplace. Okay, so what else do I have? Oh yeah, speaking of Marketplace, wow, I did not expect these to sell so quickly. These are the brand that I still haven't looked up. <laughs> it's from my last haul where I said, I don't know how to say this, let me find the tag. It's on the side, um, Sheen, Sheen, S-H-E-I-N. <laughs> Guys, come on. I should have like looked that up. But yeah, these shorts, okay, sold for $18, my full asking price on Facebook Marketplace within a day of listing them. Um, I had them on Posh for a few days and they got a little attention. I think the mom jean, the mom short thing definitely helps. Um, but yeah, Facebook Marketplace came in clutch and someone just outright bought them for $18. And uh, the buyer paid for shipping on that one as well. So um, yeah. Oh, actually, no. Facebook is doing a cool thing. As I was cross-listing this weekend using List Perfectly, like I mentioned before, Facebook was offering up some free shipping labels. So that's kind of cool. That means that the buyer got free shipping and I did not have to pay for it either. So I do think I heard Ginger Marvin talking about that at one point, but that wasn't happening for me, but now it is. So I think I have like 50 free shipping labels. So I definitely want to use those on some of my... Um, like heavier items where the buyer might not want to pay $12 to $15 in shipping, but it worked on these too. You know, the buyer didn't pay shipping 
Um, so I made $17 on these jorts. Gotta love some jorts, summertime. I sold another pair of shorts too. Those are coming up later. Okay, so on Sunday, um, I think all the rest of these, yeah, are Sunday sales, which is great. Sunday was my anniversary, uh, June 6, 2009. Whoop, whoop, shout out, hubby. <laughs> We've been married for 12 years now. And I was making sales all day, so that, <laughs> that made it kind of fun too. But on Poshmark, I was getting frustrated that I wasn't getting a lot of attention. So I took some of my older items and I dropped the prices down, down, down. Like I have so many, like five to $10 items now, but the thing about doing closet clear out, because Sunday was a closet clear out day, is that you need to keep it at $10 or above. So if you drop something to nine, the buyer is not going to get discounted shipping. If you drop it to 10, and maybe the price was originally 14, they will get discounted shipping. And that's a great incentive for a lot of buyers. So that worked with this item. This is the only item it worked on. It's a Nike golf polo, just like a gray dry fit shirt. It's really nice. I feel like other sellers have a lot of luck selling these for more than $12, but I had it listed for like a long time. And finally I was like, I gotta let this go. So I'm really excited that a buyer took advantage of that closet clear out deal and bought this. And now I have like the mission to relist the many items that I dropped down to like ridiculously low prices um, before people take advantage of it in my 30% off automatic discount bundle deal. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, golf polo, this will for $12. So I made $9.05 after Poshmark's fees. Wow, exciting stuff, I know. Next, I have these Fenty Puma shoes. Let me tell you, I bought these for myself and I didn't love the fit of them, but I did buy them for myself off Poshmark. So I got a deal. Um, I did not make back all of my money, but I had been wanting to try these for a very long time. A, a little obsessed with Rihanna's style. And when she came out with these, I was really stoked because they kind of have like a creeper look, which is a style of shoe that, you know, in my rockabilly days, I was really into as well. So anyway, I'm bummed that they didn't work for me, but they did work for someone else, hopefully. So they paid $30, um, which was my, I think I had reduced it a couple times, but that was what it was at for a while. $30. So I made 24 off these Fenty Puma shoes. The condition is not amazing but I tell you these shoes new are like 160 bucks so um I got a deal when I bought them and this buyer definitely got a deal as well next I have some quick flips for you this is another Facebook marketplace deal I made this deal while I was grocery shopping yesterday <laughs> which is always fun to like make sales when you're out shopping um this is the tool the leather belt I knew this would go quickly um, and I did not expect it to go quickly on Facebook marketplace, but it did. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a size like men's 48. I had it listed for 25 with free shipping using one of the Facebook free shipping labels. Um, and someone sent me a message asking if I would do 18 and I figure I might as well just like take the quick flip then like haggle back and forth. So let me know like what you would do in that instance. You had it listed at 25 someone asked to do 18. I almost said 20 and then I felt silly doing that. So the buyer got this for $18 shipped. This was another um, kind of weird glitch issue where the buyer asked if I do 18. I said, yes. And I reduced the price. And then she said, oh no, I can't find your listing anymore to make the purchase. So that was really weird. She asked me like if I relisted it, which I didn't. I just went to my listing and I hit share and I copied the link into our message stream and then she was able to buy it right away. So that was kind of weird, but I'm glad that like the communication was flowing and I was able to help her out. So now I'm wondering like what other sales did I miss out on? But you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm happy, I'm really happy with that quick flip on that belt. Leather tooled belts always do really well. And if you watch my weekend what sold from last week, a buckle that actually would look really nice with this um, sold very quickly on Facebook Marketplace as well. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, next I have this um, Newsboy cap. This is in my recent thrift haul as well. I listed it this week, it sold already. So happy with that. Turns out guys, listing items is how you make sales. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I did some listing, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to kind of make up for my lack of listing. Whew. My son is in baseball and it has been killing all my free time. So anyway, that and Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, so this is just like, I think it's a vintage hat. Traveler by Country Gentleman is what it says. Um, I have it in my haul. It shows like the union tag. So that's a good indicator. Thin Soleil, I love that it actually has a size on it, not just 
large. It has like seven and three eighths. So I think a lot of people that are searching for hats like this, they do want that specific size to make sure it's really going to fit well. So this was another instance where I had it listed for about $20 um, on eBay and all the platforms. And uh, someone asked if I would do 15 or actually, no, I think they said 1250. And I came back at 15 on that, which did seem a little petty, but I am paying for shipping on this. So I'm offering free shipping on this hat. So I did 15 and they accepted my offer and paid right away too having better luck with eBay um, buyers paying right away, even though I have not hit that toggle switch to force immediate payment. I need to do that. All right, and another eBay sale. Whoop, whoop. These are some America denim shorts. I really like these actually. <laughs> they're a little wild. Hopefully they're gonna rock these on 4th of July. These are bullhead denim uh, shorts. I had these listed for $20 on eBay. And once again, some good back and forth with the buyer they did not they were not trying to haggle with me they were specifically asking about the sizing because they're at size 26 high rise and they said what is that like a small a medium whatever i did come back and let them know that i do have the measurements like the waist and the rise measurements in my listing um and then also they could just look up like what is a 26 but they said that they still were kind of unsure so i just googled it and it looks like a 26 kind of tends to run about a small size three to five um, and as I was messaging her back, she says, oh, I just Googled it and it looks like these will fit. So I'm going to buy them. And I was like, yay. So she bought them the full price. These were $20. I did offer free shipping on these as well. So although my earnings after eBay fees is 17, it'll probably cost about $4 to ship them out. So, you know, once again, none of these were like huge phenomenal flips, but I was moving inventory and a lot of it I was moving quickly and that's just such a good feeling. So I have a lot more pictures that I took this weekend so I can batch list. I typically list about three items a day, at least that's my happy place. I did have a few days in the last couple of weeks where I didn't have a chance to list anything or I only listed one. My sales definitely showed, but sometimes I have to remind myself that I am doing this part-time. I do have a full-time job. I do have kids that have activities. We have to keep everything in balance, right? And so sometimes you have to pause on the craziness of reselling because it does tend to kind of, uh, it's like this, I don't know, the gears have to keep turning. You have to keep doing things to keep it going. Um, but it's okay to take a little breather if it's good for your mental health. And it really was good for my mental health. So anyway, I'm excited to be back listing more. And like I said, cross listing using list perfectly. That really came in clutch this weekend. As I'm looking at my numbers, I'm seeing two Poshmark sales that were okay. And then a few really great Facebook marketplace sales and some eBay sales as well as that one Mercari. So as you can see, it was just kind of all over the place. And I just feel like if I weren't listing on those other platforms, where would I, what would I be saying today? You know, so definitely look into list perfectly, check out my code below um, so that you can save, I think it's 30% savings um, using my code. And I think it'll really help out your business if you are looking to grow and expand a little bit. Um, so that's what I have as far as my weekend what sold. And then next I'm going to have my ship with me. All right, so a different perspective here, but I had to back up a little bit so you could kind of see the motions I was uh, going through. So um, the first step in shipping pots and pans like this is to find a box um, that's going to fit the items that you are um, selling. And you want, a, or sorry, shipping. And you want a little room. Um, let me show you something real quick. You want a little room around it. So you can see here that with the handle, I still have a good amount of room all surrounding it. Um, to be able to pad it appropriately. Now, obviously this is not a breakable item, so I could probably pack it a little more tightly. However, I just want a little space so that handle isn't um, pushed up against the edge where it could be damaged in shipment. You know, that would be such a bummer if you send it out to an excited buyer and it's broken um, because you're not gonna easily replace something like this. So anyway, yeah, I want to find a box that has a little room around it, especially if I am sending something breakable. And I will make a video on shipping fragile items at some point too. I just haven't really had a chance to do that. I've been like trying to ship things as soon as possible. Um, so with items like this, I just want to really like make sure that the handle is protected, that I won't like uh, snap off or be uh, bent in any way. So I will bubble wrap this just for good measure, but it's really not breakable. And then... I will also bubble wrap the little guy with the lids separately next to it and just try to fill the space as much as possible. When shipping items, fragile or not, 
I like to do the shake test, um, which is something that is such a simple concept. Essentially, you get it all packaged up and try to make sure that nothing moves because then you know it's exactly where it was when you packaged it. Nothing's gonna be scra uh, scratching each other, bumping around, anything like that. So the shake test has really been a lifesaver as I've been shipping like glass items and breakable items as well. But I'm gonna do the shake test with this as well. A little movement is okay as long as my handles are protected, um, but I don't wanna really hear things jumbling around in there. All right, so go to break to add the bubble wrap. Okay, so I added some bubble wrap. It is not like cute or beautiful and I would definitely wrap things more tightly if I were doing a fragile item versus metal pots and pans. But I'm just gonna give you a quick glimpse of what this looks like. <laughs> so I ended up not having my small bubble wrap, which is what I really like to get around the handles. So pro tip, make sure you have all the supplies you need um, before you try to ship something out. But I did have some um, Amazon Prime like uh, padded mailers. So the, that works great for this too because once again, it's not a highly breakable item. I just wanna make sure it's protected. So I wrapped the um, mailers around the handles and taped it so that it's very secure on that spot to give it some extra, you know, I don't know, protection there. I, maybe I'm overdoing it, I just worry about these things. I also wanted to make sure that the metal is not touching. Even though these are kind of worn pots and pans, they have some scratches. I don't want to create more scratches. So I made sure to put a layer of this thicker, let me show you, these kind of air pocket bubble wrap um, pods in between the two pots and then all around it to kind of protect some of that free space to stop it from moving a lot in shipment. So yeah, I think I would call this done. I did um, close it up like this without taping it and I did the shake test. Now let me do it for you real quick. So you probably can't hear, things are lightly moving, but nothing is clanking around in there and there's not a lot of movement. So I feel good about that with metal pots and pans. Once again, disclaimer, if it was glass, I don't want it to move at all when you shake it. Um, so yeah, now what I'll do is throw my thank you card in here and then weigh it to buy the shipping label. Um, now I did actually do this through Facebook shipping and they have their label set to like two to five pounds. So I do believe I'm within that parameter because I did weigh this before. Woohoo, go me. But once again, I just wanna weigh it again to make sure that with the box and the shipping materials, we're still in that range. So that way, if I need to make any kind of edits to the label, I can. And I will add to that, I'm gonna show you really quick my shipping scale because it took me a long time to like get to this level where I bought this scale, but it is so great. I really love it because it is a scale, well, you'll see. It's a pretty big scale, but it also has a wire or an adapter with the digital reading like far away from the scale. So that way when I put a large box on it that actually kind of overcomes the scale itself, I can still see the reading without having to peek under it and play the guessing game. I do have this scale as an Amazon, Amazon affiliate link in my description. So if you're looking to upgrade, it's really not too expensive. And things like this in a Rolo printer, um, or thermal printer, some of those kind of things that you're gonna use all the time, I think is a very worthwhile business expense. Okay, so this is the scale that I use. So as you can see, it's got this cord and a digital reader, which is pretty cool. So you just push on and then you can do different modes. And I'm going to put my box on here, one-handed, super awkwardly, to see what it weighs. Okay, so three pounds, 14 ounces. As you can see, this box like totally overtakes the scale. So if I had to like move it around to read it, the, chain, the reading might change. And um, having the like uh, adapter there makes it so simple to be able to do it. So um, yeah, I'm actually gonna go ahead and weigh that backpack now too. I do have it here with me. So we're back at zero, Boba Fett backpack. Okay, so we're at one pound, two ounces. So that will help me to buy a label for that as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can show you guys like how much it actually costs to ship that out. Okay, for funsies, I'm going to go ahead and pack the Boba Fett backpack while we're here together anyway. Um, I will say that um, I am reusing packaging materials from USPS sending me um, padded flat rate mailers. So that's another pro tip too. Reuse what you have. This is a great backpack size, right? 
Um, I also got all those air pocket um, like shipping supplies from friends who have like held on to their things that they get from Amazon packages. And even that box that I sent the pots and pans in is from a friend just saving boxes for me. So definitely try to like gather as many free materials and reuse materials as it is more green. Um, try to do that as much as you can to lower your shipping cost and make it easier to ship out items. But like I said, always make sure you have the supplies you need. Now I'm sending this backpack in this, um, you know, just basic poly mailer because once again, it's the perfect size for it. Putting in a box could bring it up to like two pounds and the, the shipping cost would get more, uh, more expensive. So to be able to send it something like this, since it is non-breakable, it's not going to get damaged in this, is the perfect solution. So I would re-weigh this, but you saw how much it weighed. The poly mailer is going to have maybe an ounce. So I'll just put that um, on the label when I ship it. Okay, y'all, so I just, um, as you know, weighed and packaged this Boba Fett backpack, and then I typed in the uh, buyer's address on Pirate Ship to create a label for them. Turns out it's going to California. Oh, that's always the most expensive for me, being in Illinois. Shipping is going to cost me $9, so that's a little embarrassing. I definitely thought it would be like $7 <laughs> to ship out this backpack. So whoopsie, bad on me. So $5 cost of goods, $9 shipping. I made like $6 off that backpack. It is what it is. And at least I didn't lose money, but I definitely like to at least double my money off most items. So maybe I shouldn't have offered free shipping. Uh, maybe you should do my research ahead of time. But hey, that's why we're here, right? I'm gonna share my mistakes with you. Even though it's not a big mistake, I'm gonna share that mistake with you um, so that you can learn to maybe increase your cost of goods if you are offering free shipping a little bit more than I did. All right, friends, so that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me and hanging out for my uh, shipping experiences and woes. <laughs> If you have any shipping tips, um, drop them in the comments below. Or every week I love to hear some of your favorite items that sold in the last week. I'm learning a lot from the different comments that have been dropped. So I highly encourage you to read through the comments as well and, and share some info of your own. We're learning and growing together. It is awesome. Okay, so I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.